I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons, my Biblio Spran, Biblio Howlers, and Biblio Mansers. Thank you so much for supporting my hobby and passion even more. It means so much to me. Hi everyone, Better here. Two weeks have passed and that means it is time for another episode of SFF Spotlight. And today is uh, SFF Spotlight episode 22. For those of you who are new here, as always, this is a series of videos where I talk about new cover reveals, new special editions, new book news, and also new noteworthy release in the adult science fiction and fantasy genre within the past two weeks. And just like always, we have about 20 topics to cover today. And let's start by talking about this movie adaptation. I know I just said that uh, SFF Spotlight will be a series of videos where I talk about science fiction and fantasy, but for this particular one, I think I will have to mention it, and this is The Last Kingdom. The release date for The Last Kingdom, Seven Kings Must Die, has been announced, and this one will premiere on the 14th of April, and this one will finally conclude The Last Kingdom TV show adaptation and also movie adaptation. I've read the entire Last Kingdom series by Bernard Conwell. I enjoyed it, but in my personal opinion, I think the TV show adaptation is actually better. So the first five seasons of The Last Kingdom TV show, it adapts the first 10 books in The Last Kingdom novels or the Saxon Tales. And this movie, Seven Kings Must Die, will adapt the final three novels into one movie. And I think it will work out very nicely because I think uh, the last three books, from my perspective, there are plenty of things in the last three books that could be cut off without losing any great elements of the series. I love The Last Kingdom TV show and I hope this movie will deliver a fitting and satisfying conclusion to the series. It's time for the tale of Uhtred, son of Uhtred, son of Uhtred to be close. And before we move on to talk about books, the next spotlight will go to Pluto anime adaptation. I am so shocked by this one. Pluto by Naoki Urasawa and Osamu Tezuka is one of my favorite manga. Anything by Naoki Urasawa is great. 20th Century Boys, Monster, and Pluto, these three in particular are the best of the best by him in my opinion. And it was quite a shock to me that uh, Pluto is finally being adapted. Hopefully this means that 20th Century Boys will finally be adapted into anime as well because Monster has been adapted and the reception has been incredible. And from the anime trailer, it's looking very likely that Pluto will be awesome as well. Hopefully there will be an anime adaptation for 20th Century Boys one day, but until that happens, I'm so looking forward to watching this one. You have no idea how excited I am for Pluto anime adaptation. And if you haven't read anything by Naoki Urasawa yet, make sure to fix that. Whether you want to start reading Monster, 20th Century Boys, or Pluto, you cannot go wrong with any of them. Now let's move on to the next section of today's SFF Spotlight video. It is time to talk about new announcements for special editions. And yeah, like always, we have many special editions to talk about. It really seems like every week there is always a new announcement for a new special edition. And I will start off today's episode by talking about Sufficiently Advanced Magic by Andrew Rowe. So Redmark, in collaboration with Podium, has announced that, that the Kickstarter campaign for the Sufficiently Advanced Magic, the first book in the Arcane Ascension, the Kickstarter campaign for the Deluxe Hardcover Edition will start on the 28th of April. Sufficiently Advanced Magic by Andrew Rowe is a great self-published fantasy book. It is one of the first few uh, self-published fantasy books that actually sparked my interest in trying more self-published fantasy books and I'm really glad for it. Books like uh, Arcane Ascension and also uh, Manifest Delusions by Michael R. Fletcher were hugely responsible for sparking my love and interest in reading more self-published fantasy books and well, ever since then, I never looked back. And this special edition is looking pretty good just from this banner so far. The cover art and the spray edges look stunning and I have been impressed by the production value that I got from The Mother of Learning published by Raidmark Creative. I'm actually quite confident that Raidmark Creative will succeed at delivering another satisfying product. Remember, the Kickstarter campaign for Sufficiently Advanced Magic will start on the 28th of February. And speaking of Kickstarter campaign, the next one will be for The Threat of Shadows, the first book in the Keeper Chronicles uh, trilogy by G.A. Andrews. And this one, the Kickstarter campaign will start on the 24th of February. So only a few days from now. Now, there hasn't been too many details on this one. Based on the banner and the mock-up that I saw uh, shared by the author, it's looking very likely that this one will be similar to Ben Gelly's uh, The Written Illustrated Edition. The author was kind enough to share with me one interior illustration that will be included in the hardcover edition, in the hardcover deluxe edition, and it will be done by Omer Burak Onal. 
Omer has done many gorgeous of his fantasy books, cover art like a Threadlight trilogy by Zach Argyle and plenty more. And I look forward to seeing all the other illustrations that he will contribute into this hardcover edition. The last Kickstarter campaign to spotlight today will be for The Expanse by James S.A. Corey. The Kickstarter campaign for this one is now live, it has been fully funded, but for those of you who are the fans of The Expanse, I think you should take a look into this one. So this one is called Dragon Tooth and it will take place after book 6. Uh, Babylon's Ashes, but before book 7 of the series, Persepolis Rising. This totally makes sense because book 6 and book 7, well, there is a huge time gap between these two books, and so this will be like the missing years between these two books. I am still waiting for the continuation for the TV show adaptation for The Expanse. I think it's such a sad and missed opportunity for the TV show to be concluded at the sixth volume. Book 7, book 8, and book 9 are some of the best books in the entire Expanse series, and I hope they will be adapted into a TV show someday. And for the next few special editions I would like to spotlight today, none of them are Kickstarter campaign based. And the first one I would like to spotlight today is for The Hitchhiker Guide to Galaxy by Douglas Adam. Yes, this is a classic. And Curious King has announced they will be doing a special edition, a special limited edition for The Hitchhiker Guide to Galaxy. I know that this is a classic sci-fi novel beloved by so many readers. There hasn't been too many details on this yet except that Gary Giani, an incredible artist who have done many beautiful artworks for A Song of Ice and Fire and many other books, he will be doing the illustrations, the interior artworks, and the cover art for this special edition for The Hitchhiker Guide to Galaxy published by Curious King. Once I have more news on this one, I will definitely share it on my SFF Spotlight videos. And the next special edition will be for The Roots of Chaos. Uh, so far, two books are out by Samantha Shannon. The first book is The Priory of the Orange Tree, and the second book is Day of Fallen Night, and this special edition is for the Illumi Crate edition, not the Broken Binding edition. But it is hard for me to decide which one looks better, both uh, the Broken Binding edition and also Illumi Crate edition for the Roots of Chaos. Both of them look stunning, but I really love the naked hardcover uh, art for the Illumi Crate edition, and the set will be priced at 75 euro plus shipping. The general sale for the Roots of Chaos Illumi Crate edition will take place on the 23rd of February, so yeah, very soon. And speaking of broken binding earlier, the next and final three special editions on today's SFF Spotlight video will all be published by the broken binding. And the first one is for The House with Good Bones by T. Kingfisher. I don't know too much about this one, I haven't read anything by Kingfisher yet, but I know that Kingfisher has a lot of fans. Especially with the release of Nettle and Bones recently, I think I've seen so many people talking about uh, Kingfisher lately. And for the next one, The Broken Binding has also announced they will be doing a special edition for the Night Angel Nemesis by Brandwick's Night Angel Nemesis is the newest book in the Night Angel world, so this one will take place after the Night Angel trilogy, and I don't know too many details on this yet. And although I enjoyed reading the Lightbringer series by Brandwicks, I haven't read the Night Angel yet. Hopefully, I will get around to this one soon. But if you want to know about the details of the special edition, make sure to check out the link I left in the description down below. And finally, the last special edition for today's SFF Spotlight video will be for the Tide Child trilogy by RJ Barker. So the Broken Burning has announced that the Tide Child trilogy will be the next subscription books for the month of April until June 2023. I think many of you know that I'm a fan of RJ Barker's books, whether it's the Wounded Kingdom trilogy or the Thai Child trilogy, I love both of them. And I think it's really cool to see that the Thai Child trilogy getting a special edition treatment. It will have new and paper art by Katrina Paints, and this is the preview. I think this one looks amazing already. Look at that Keishan in the artwork, it will look so good as end papers. And I cannot wait to see what Broken Binding will do for the entire trilogy. But that's it for special editions. Now let's move on to the next section. It is time to talk about new cover reveals. Let's start from traditionally published fantasy books. Books first. So the first one, because I just talked about RJ Barker, well, the cover art to the newest book by RJ Barker has been revealed, and this is the cover art for The Gods of the Wordwood by RJ Barker. This will be the first book in his newest series titled The Forsaken Trilogy. Well, as I said earlier, I love everything by RJ Barker so far, and I think this one will be another hit for me again. The cover art is done by Duncan Spilling, and this book will be released on the 29th of June 2023. It is easy to say that this is one of my most anticipated novels of the year. And speaking of one of my most anticipated release, uh, the cover art to the third book in the Pack and Pattern trilogy by J.T. Greathouse has been revealed as well. 
This is the cover art to the pattern of the world. This will conclude the pack and pattern trilogy and the cover art is once again done by Patrick Knowles. I think as far as cover art goes, this is my favorite cover art of the entire trilogy. The Head of the Sun King is one of my favorite debuts. I did not like the second book as much as the Head of the Sun King. The second book did a great job in setting up the plot for the big conclusion in the third and final book. Hopefully, JT Great House will deliver a satisfying conclusion to this trilogy. And the next cover reveal will not be for a new book, but this will be for an older book that received a new updated cover art and I think a new editing as well. This will be for The City of Bones by Martha Wells. The new cover art is done by Jamie Jones and I think it is far, far superior than its previous cover art. I think City of Bones is a one-off standalone novel. I haven't read anything, any fantasy books by Martha Wells yet, but I heard so many great things about her fantasy books and I think it is a good decision for me to start with City of Bones because this is a one-off standalone novel and I heard many great things about it. Also, Jamie Jones just never miss. When I saw the cover art being revealed, I knew immediately that this is most likely illustrated by Jamie Jones and I was right. Jamie Jones did so many amazing cover art. He also did the cover art to the Murder Bot series and well, I think this is a well-deserved cover art for Martha Wells. And speaking of City of Bones, I want to make it clear that uh, Cassandra Clare didn't come up with the title City of Bones. Apparently some people thought that City of Bones by Martha Wells copied City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. Well, as I said, Cassandra Clare is not the first author that came up with the title for City of Bones and also City of Bones by Martha Wells was first published in 1995, 12 years before City of Bones by Cassandra Clare even came out. So that argument is well, it doesn't work. But anyway, that issue aside, I look forward to getting myself a copy of City of Bones by Martha Wells, the new updated and revised edition. And moving on to the next one, this is for the cover reveals for He Who Drowned the World by Shelley Parker Chan. So this is the sequel to She Who Became the Sun. And yeah, this is the second and final book in the Radiant Empire duology. I really enjoyed She Who Became the Sun. I think it is a great book. And the cover art is once again done by Jung Shan Inc. The cover art is behind She Who Became the Sun and also the Poppy War Trilogy and many other Asian-inspired fantasy books. She Who Became the Sun is a popular and also well-received historical fantasy novel and I think there's a degree of high anticipation and high expectation coming into He Who Drowned the World. Hopefully this one will be even better than She Who Became the Sun and conclude the duology magnificently. I'm really hoping that will be the case. And the last cover reveal for traditionally published book today will be for Long Past Dues by James Butcher. This is the second book in the Unorthodox Chronicles. This is the sequel to Dead Man's Hand. And yeah, this is an urban fantasy series just like what his father has created, the Dresden Files. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, James Butcher is the son of Jim Butcher, the author behind Dresden Files and Codex Alera. And not only this one will be an urban fantasy series, but they shared also the same cover artist. So yeah, the cover art to this one is done by Chris McGrath as well. The cover artist behind Dresden Files and so many other fantasy series like Mistborn, The Echo Saga, and so many more. Now let's talk about some published fantasy books cover reveal. And today I have two new cover reveals to spotlight. The first one will be for The Fear of Moncroa by Brian Asher. This one will be a vampire epic fantasy. I really love the Castlevania style of the cover art and the cover art is done by Christian Angel. But not only that, this book, even though it's only about uh, 200 pages long, it will feature plenty of interior illustrations, all of them done by Christian Angel. All the artworks I've seen, whether it's the cover art or interior illustrations, all of them looks beautiful. I look forward to reading this one someday. At least this one will be a short book. And the next and final cover reveal to talk about today will be for The Ice by Ryan Cahill. Yes, Ryan Cahill just announced another book in the Bound and the Broken series. But this one, just like The Fall and The Exile, will be a novella. Ryan Cahill has talked about this before. Every time he releases a new novel, he will also release a new novella before he releases the next novel. So The Eyes will be the third novella in the Bound and the Broken series. And the cover art is done by Ryan Cahill himself. I think this is actually the best cover art of the entire series. 
whether it's for the novels or novella. And I'm confident this one will be released within 2023 as well, probably within the first half of this year. Judging from the cover art, and if you are a fan of the Bound and the Broken series, I think it is safe to say that this one will feature Aeson as the main character, and it will feature the origin of Valerius. I love Of War and Ruin, the third book in the Bound and the Broken series so much. I think it is, uh, to this day, it is still my favorite book of the year so far. So I am undoubtedly looking forward to reading The Ice as soon as it's released. So that's it for the topic of cover reveals. Now it's time to move on to the final section of today's SFF Spotlight video, and that is to talk about new noteworthy release. These five books, all of them are out now. And the first one I would like to spotlight is for The Bloody Chorus by John Marco. I think plenty of fantasy readers know John Marco for his Jackal trilogy. It is quite an older trilogy, but I haven't read anything by uh, the author yet. This one with the cover art done by Felix Ortiz and designed by Sean King, I think it looks incredible. And yeah, this book is out now. I own a copy of it and I look forward to reading it as soon as possible. Early reviews for this one have been very positive and hopefully I will end up living my first try reading John Marco's book whenever I can. And the next noteworthy release I would like to spotlight today is for The Horns of Grief uh, by E.J. Double. This is the second book in the Blood and Steel saga, and this is a grimdark fantasy series. A grimdark fantasy series by a young author. I think the author is relatively young, just like uh, R.F. Kuang. He released the first book, I think, when he was 21 years old. Yeah, I know, impressive. And it's even more impressive because the book, uh, the first book, has gained so many positive reviews from grimdark fantasy readers. I look forward to reading this uh, someday, as soon as possible. I own the first book already, but well, as always, I cannot predict when I will read a series because, well, my TBR pile is just immense. And for the next and last three noteworthy releases, all of them are released on the same date, 16th of February. And the first one, I have read this one. This is The Tyranny of Fate by Richard Swan. This is the second book in the Empire of the Wolf trilogy, and I've read and enjoyed this one. I think this is just as good as the Justice of Kings. I have done a full spoiler-free review for this book on my Goodreads and also on my blog. And I am quite confident if you love the Justice of Kings, there's a really good chance you will end up living the tyranny of fate as well. And also that cover art by Martina Fajkova, I love it so much. I cannot get enough of Martina Fajkova's illustrations. I am actually equally excited to see the cover art to the third book as much as I look forward to reading the book itself because this book, the ending, well, let's just say that it leaves me very much excited to read the third and final book in the trilogy as soon as possible. And the next noteworthy release will be for The Shadow Casket by Chris Wooding. This is the second book in the Dark Water Legacy uh, trilogy, and this one is the sequel to The Amber Blade, a book that I truly love. I think The Amber Blade is still very much underread to this day. Well, The Amber Blade has been published for almost five years, and so far it has about 3,000 ratings on Goodreads. I think it deserves so much more readership especially if you're a fan of classic fantasy troops with a modern fantasy voice. Chris Whitting did so many things right with the Amber Blade, and recently I finished reading The Shadow Casket, the anticipated, my anticipated sequel to The Amber Blade, and as expected, I end up enjoying it. Probably not as much as The Amber Blade, because Amber Blade, in my opinion, is just such a terrific book, but I still love it very much. I'm in the middle of writing a full review for The Shadow Casket at the moment. And finally, the last noteworthy release and the last topic for today's video will be for The Jaguar Path by Anna Stevens. This is the sequel to The Stone Knife. I absolutely love The Stone Knife, but because it has been a while since I've read The Stone Knife and there is no detailed recap of the book, I think it might be quite difficult for me to enter The Jaguar Path by Anna Stevens. I mean, I could probably just force myself reading through it. I might end up remembering some details of the first book, but the first book was just so good. If possible, I want to remember every details of it before I dive into The Jaguar Path. So I think it is quite likely I will end up reading The Stone Knife again first before I dive into The Jaguar Path and possibly its sequel and the final book in the trilogy. But yeah, The Stone Knife is a great character-driven grimdark fantasy novel, and if you're a fan of grimdark fantasy, I think it is so worth taking a look. So yeah, that's it. That's the end of today's SFF Spotlight video. As always, do let me know what you think about this news that I just shared with you, and let me know which one are you most excited about. As always, thank you so much for watching, and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me. 